Ladies, everyone, it's your girl Victoria Smith from Tears for Hope Foundation, founder and chief creative officer of a 501c3 nonprofit legal foundation registered in the state of Georgia. We are here today to visit and see DJ Tump at the Sam Ash Music Warehouse. But see, but see, a person can tell you what's nice, but the actions is everything. It's about it's about how people move when you play it. Without you know, just watching people's actions, that's something that can't be hid. You know what I mean? Um, by the time you play it, you know you, you want to play your stuff for for your friends first, of course. But then you got to just play it around total strangers. I mean, if somebody can tell you that it's hot, but really. You, you, I would recommend you to work off their actions more than their words. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes when you are hanging out, it's good to just have something on you. Have some of your beat CDs on you. Uh, you run across, you see a Jeezy or whatever. Hey, man, what's happening? Oh, man, check this out. Bill. All right, cool. Like I say, don't talk on the depth. Just give them a CD. Keep it rolling. And, I mean, you, hopefully, I mean, you'll be the made at least more, at least, Hopefully you have at least five copies on you, because there ain't no telling who else you might see. I, I mean, I came out my pocket and flew up to New York with Jay-Z for a few days. Boom. Um, and at least 12 producers came through there. I mean, everybody was getting turned down. By the time he got to me, he didn't really want to hear no more than three beats, because his ears were worn out. I was like, well, dude, I know I got one out of three. <laughs> so the first one I played was more of a up-tempo joint. It was real original, crazy little Indian in the background. Like sample or whatnot, but um, but I got. But when he told me that the field that he was looking for, I was like, ah, oh, okay, kind of like Blueprint, you know, old school samples. Well, I got this joint that I chopped up, which was that uh, Tom Brock, the greatest love, and boom, I say hello to the bad guy. There it was, you know what I mean. So that came on the strength of me taking the initiative to go to New York, stay at the Hudson Hotel for what. Uh, five days straight, um, even though it only took one day to get it placed, but boom. I mean, that, that I made the initiative to go up there. I mean, I Being wasn't going yeah, I wasn't gonna wait for Jay-Z to come to Atlanta. You know, I definitely would've made, would've made the album. Uh, same thing with Kanye. I just happened to be moving up around in New York. When they told me he was at Sony Recording Studios, I made it my, my business to go down there. Um, he was playing around on the ASR 10, so I was like, yo, let's collaborate on something. You know, he wanted some help. And once he saw what I was doing on the ASR, he was like, dude, I want to come to Atlanta to finish my album. Boom, there you go, graduation. Big brother, good life, Grammy winning, water winning song. And um, can't tell me nothing. So that was three joints. I got landed on Kanye's album, which ended up being an incredible album. Glad to be a part of that. But it was all about album me getting out. Year. Yeah, album of the year. It was about, about me getting out just hustling, you know. If I sat around just waiting for it, Ain't no telling what would have happened. But of course, you definitely have got to be able to afford to, you know, your plane tickets and your hotel. So I'm definitely thankful for that, for being able to even just fund my stuff. But once I got in with Def Jam, they paid for everything. Once they saw what I was bringing to the table, I really didn't have to go in my pocket for anything, you know? So, so is it more important to have all the latest and greatest gear, or is it important to, to know what you got? It's good to have the latest and greatest gear. I gotta say, man, you work at, you work at Sam Ash, man. You supposed to sell that gear. Have, you gotta have, have all the new too. shit. Um, definitely. You wanna, um... You wanna be selective about the equipment that you get. You know, I like like even like when I come through here, or when I go to other, any other spot, I see um, people playing around for a minute. And then you might see somebody who may just grab a keyboard, oh man, that's the one everybody getting. Okay, let me, let me get that. But you don't really know what it is until you get home and start tapping around and find out that it's really not you. That you're getting this machine just on the base of, off of what you hear everybody talking about. You know what I mean? Um, to this day, I got a lot of people who say, man, you know, I bought an ASR 10, but you know, they, they bought an ASR 10 on the strip of just knowing that that's what Neptune's, Timberland's, Tunes, and everybody else used. But once they got it to the crib, they found out, hey man, this is really not me. I need to get a motif, I need to get a chord, you know, a Triton or whatnot. But, um, and the ASR, especially, I mean, you know, it's a discontinued machine, but that was just an example of what I'm saying as far as, like, it's just the gear, you gotta get in, play around a little bit, and really see what you, what, what really suits you. Shout out to the 
volunteers for Hope Foundation, definitely. Fighting, you know, all the sexual diseases, AIDS, awareness, and all that, man. So, you know, I support everything, man. It's so definitely a good call. Like you say, man, y'all stay safe out there, all the young kids and whatnot. You know what I mean? Keep it safe or just don't do it, period. Be good, all right? What's up? Yo, truly DJ Toon. Give him a shout-out to my man Cinematic, all right?